cruiserweights he can definitely beat, like Lauren Ross. And sometimes he can handle heavyweights too, like Jimmy Ellis. Tony used his hand speed and combinations to win this one. And it's this quickness that Tony hopes will help him beat Ray Mercer tonight. And he'll need all of that quickness to get the job done. But sometimes quickness isn't enough. Lionel Butler was a little too powerful for Willis, as were other big hitters like Tim Witherspoon and Phil Jackson. And so for Willis, if you fight a big heavyweight, you better have a plan. He's a good, solid heavyweight. And, and a guy like that, you don't want to be standing in front of because you can't hit. The main thing is to stay away from his power and stay out in front of him. So here's a look at Tony Willis now. You see in his last fight, he lost to Lionel Butler, who right now is a pretty hot heavyweight, to tell you the truth. He's been whacking people out with great consistency. But Willis feels he has a real legitimate chance tonight. Ray Mercer uh, would not give him any reason right at the moment to not think that, as he lost that fight we have talked about ad nauseum to Jesse Ferguson in 10 rounds and thus cost himself a million-dollar opportunity. But it is a different Ray Mercer that we see today than that we have seen before. Let's talk, Al, about the AutoZone keys to victory. Well, for Ray Mercer, uh, he's got to put his punches together, which, as he points out, he's capable of doing because he's in shape. Go to the body, something he always forgets to do. And for Willis, got to move early and give a lot of angles to Ray Mercer. Not a big ring. That won't help Willis. So that's the story of the fight. Let's get up to Michael Buffer and meet him. Mike? And now, ladies and gentlemen, top rank incorporated along with the undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Bud Weiser, proud to be your bud, present the featured bout of the evening. This bout is sanctioned by the Mississippi State Athletic Commission. Chairman, Mr. Billy Lyons, Chief Deputy Commissioner at ringside, Sal Toronto, Physician in attendance, Dr. James Crittenden, the timekeeper, Jerry Taylor, counting for the knockdown seconds, Rick Taylor. The three judges assigned scoring this bout on a 10-point must system are Chester Como, Elmo Adolph, and Freddie Steinwinder. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Casino Magic, here in Bay St. Louis, Mississippi, uh, let's get ready to run! Ten rounds of boxing in the heavyweight division. When the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, referee Martin Cosino. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks with red trim and white letters, and weighing in at 205 pounds. From the windy city of Chicago, Illinois, he brings a professional record of 21 and 6. 16 of his 21 victories by KO. Ladies and gentlemen, top. Tony Willis! And his opponent fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the gold trunks with red trim and black letters, weighing in at 227 and 3 quarter pounds. He's originally from Jacksonville, Florida, but now fighting out of West Orange, New York. This 1988 Olympic gold medal champion has a professional record of 20 victories with 15 KOs, two defeats, he held the WBO heavyweight title. Ladies and gentlemen, he is Merciless Ray Mercer. Okay, gentlemen, you know the rules. I want a good, clean fight. Watch your low blows, watch your head bust. Obey my commands. Now, merciless Ray Mercer, who it must be said this time for the first time in a long time, is also girthless Ray Mercer. Yeah, it's true. You look at him, this is the best shape I have seen him in in a long time, probably since the Morrison fight. I'm not even sure he's not in better shape than the Morrison fight. I think he might be. And conversely, Tony Willis is up at a weight that is pretty, pretty high for him. Up over 200 pounds. He really fights his best down around 190 some, 194, 195. And he doesn't really carry it well, let's put it that way. No, you can see though he's a quick fighter, and he'll right away starting out with a lot of movement. Ray Mercer is a guy who, as we indicated at the beginning of this program, is out of tomorrow's. He, he not only has to win, I think he has to win in an impressive fashion. He's got to win some friends back. There's the jab of Ray Mercer, which is... You remember he knocked Larry Holmes down with all oh my. Well, that didn't take long. 
We almost got Tony Willis into our announcement space here. This isn't going to go far. I can promise you that. Willis is still in big, big trouble. Mercer just looking to finish. Willis trying to hold on. He's got a long way to go, more than halfway through this round. Well, the power of Ray Mercer, too much for Willis right now. And Willis is still in trouble. Not too unexpected, really. I'm going to call that a slip, even though it really, you could have said that was a knockdown. There's a left hand that drives Willis almost through the ropes, and this time that's down. Willis is back and trying to figure out exactly what country he's in. There is, there is a three knockdown rule. That was the second. So they could have called it when he went into the ropes as a knockdown. And he's still in trouble. He has no legs at all. It will take just one more punch from Mercer. Next big punch Mercer lands will be the last of this fight, I yeah, assure you. No question. And that might have been it right there. That's it, Trevor. First punch of the fight put him down, and the last punch of the fight might have been the best. You know what? You know what's sad about this? Ray Mercer's in shape. He could have fought. I know that's right. I mean, that, that's the part that's ironic. This is this is the most in shape Ray Mercer there is, but he was in against a guy that had no shot, basically. So, so what you get? But I'll tell you what, though. Forgetting that, let's just look at it from Ray Mercer's standpoint for a moment as Tony Willis is down, and I believe he's okay because he was talking to him. What Ray Mercer proved to himself, no matter what was, he was prepared for a fight at least, but he just didn't get one. Uh, exactly, that's right. In fact, it looked like he wanted to fight a little yes. bit longer. Yes, indeed. And, and you know, for Tony Willis, here's the bottom line. He's not a heavyweight. Never has been a heavyweight, shouldn't be fighting as a heavyweight. They knew it. He should be a cruiserweight. So he's supposed to be, and he shouldn't have been in this fight as a heavyweight. Well, but every cruiserweight tells you you can't get a fight as a cruiserweight. As you look at the winner, and I'll tell you what, there, there may be some suspicion in everything that's gone on in the past in this man's life, but there's no suspicion about his performance tonight. No, and, and, and in truth, as we take a look at the first knockdown, we know that he came prepared tonight. It's just unfortunate that there wasn't much to offer here. Good right hand by Ray, and now they're, of course, hitting him when he's down. Not a good idea, but he did kind of hold back on that punch. But you can understand Ray Mercer being kind of excited about, well, he didn't hold back too much, did he? From uh, another angle, you see the good right hand by Ray Mercer. He does have excellent power. That's one thing in boxing that we've got to find a way to do away with. Martin Cosina, too far away to get in there quick enough, unfortunately. But Ray Mercer has a jackhammer right, and he showed it. All right, let's get the official word from Michael Buck. Mike Martin Cosino enforces the three knockdown rule. The end comes at two minutes, 11 seconds of the very first round. The winner by TKO, Merciless Ray Mercer. Well, Ray Mercer, two minutes and 11 seconds for three knockdowns and an impressive performance for Mercer who still has a couple of other things to deal with, but uh, one thing he may not have to deal with for the moment is his boxing future. I saw Ray Mercer at his very best tonight, but uh, if it wasn't tonight, then the other time that he was at his very best was against Damiani, at least for a brief fleeting moment, but a brief fleeting moment is all it took in that fight. We're going to look back on the Mercer-Damiani fight in just a little bit. But right now, let's take you up to the center of the ring where Al Bernstein is with the current and present Ray Mercer. Thank you, Barry. I'm here with uh, Team Mercer here. He's got the whole crew with him. And uh, Ray, one thing about this spot, it's true that Tony Wills didn't offer you much, but what you came in with was you were in shape and you appeared uh, mentally and physically ready. Oh, that's right. I was. I don't know what he came to offer, what he had to offer when he came, but I was mentally and physically prepared for anything that was going to be in front of me tonight. Well, what you did come out doing right away, which is a good sign, is jabbing, which is one of the things that you do well when you do it, yeah. and that set up the right hand. Right. Uh, you know, he was going. He's supposed to be in the movie. We had a small ring. I was going to run him down. You know, I, I was planning for, uh, on going about, you know, just two rounds, but, you know, I got a little sweat going back in the dressing room, so I'm right. happy. Okay, let's go. Let's take a look at the first knockdown. We got plenty of time here. Trust me. <laughs> and it'll be a right hand that you're not going to die with. Well, in fact, if you got some songs you'd like to do, it'd be okay. Yeah. Well, it, it was pretty good right hand. We've been working hard on right hand. I apologize to the public for that blow, but when you hype, you hype. 
Yeah, well, that's what we said, actually, that, you know, it's been a while since you're in there in this situation. This is the, the second knockdown. Again, the right hands were important. Right. Uh, he was set up for the right hand because he was leaning over to the left. And uh, thank God for the right hand. I ain't, get enough, I ain't get a chance to use my jab like I like. But uh, next month, maybe, with Bob Aaron's help, I'll get to use it a little more. Well, you used it there in setting up the right hand, and now he was in trouble, and you nailed him with that shot. And uh, you didn't go after him there, which was a good uh, I, thing. I knew I could. I hit him flush about three times, so I knew he was out right there. Okay, now, it, you, you come in here against the Tony Wills. He's not able to move as much as uh, as he would have liked. What did this do? Did this do anything for you as a fighter beyond getting you in good shape, which may be the most important thing? Well, that is the most important thing. Plus, uh, you know, it's good for my confidence, and uh, I don't know any fighter out there that would uh, throw away a first-round knockout. So I'm happy <laughs> with my performance, and I'll, I'll take nothing from myself. That is true. Now, but Bob Arum's here. What What is next for Amersh? Obviously, you're going to want him to get him in him against better guys and see what what now he has uh, with this new condition. Well, uh, you know, we've always felt that Ray Mercer could handle anybody in the heavyweight division if he was motivated and in shape, including Riddick Bowe. And that's a fight that Ray lost the opportunity for, but that's what we're pointing to. And Jesse Ferguson has said in this in the ring uh, last month that he wanted to fight Ray Mercer. After this performance, after he sees the shape that Ray is in, I don't know where Jesse is going to be. but. I'd like him to fight Jesse Ferguson, sure, but there are a lot of other fighters out there. Michael Mora, I mean, is looking for a fight in December. We would fight Michael Mora in one second because I really believe, Al, that Ray Mercer is the guy that's capable of beating Riddick Bowe. Now, okay, given that, Ray, uh, if you were to get in there with Jesse Ferguson the next time, and of course all your other problems have got to be dealt with first, what would you do differently other than being in shape, or is that the key? That was the key. Uh, my condition was the key, you know, in that, fa in, in, in that fight. And, uh, you know, if your body's not right, your mind's not going to be right. So we will be prepared should it happen. Okay. We'll be prepared for anything. Can't. One last question. How much emotionally is it taken out of you, and how confident are you that you're going to get past the legal problems in New York? Well, you know, everything happens for a reason, and, and a good person, and you have good friends around you, uh, we're going to turn around, we're going to make a good, good positive thing out of it, and uh, it's not affecting me at all. It's motivating me to get in shape, as you can see. Well, it did tonight, that's yeah. for sure. All yeah, right. so. Congratulations on your win. Okay, thank you. Good win for Ray Mercer. Well, when we come back, you're going to be able to see the time when he won the WBO title, snatching defeat, or victory from the jaws of defeat against Francesco Damiani. Magic in Bay St. Louis, Mississippi, where we have seen Ray Mercer with a one-round knockout over Tony Willis. We're going to have a chance now to look back January of 1991, we saw Ray Mercer yet another time, and I think you capsulized the whole fight when you said snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. Yeah, literally, Ray Mercer was in all kinds of trouble against Francesco Damiani and did, in fact, find that one weapon that he needed, but uh, it was an interesting boxing lesson he was getting. 